you know, it's been a long weekend. We don't know exactly how um, people have been practicing the tracking, but, you know, if there's any um, questions, you can chat us. If there's any specific, something specific you wanted to go over, I can do that. Uh, but it, it's uh, something that's kind of fluid, so whatever uh, you know, information you would need to help you or support uh, what you're learning, then that would be a good thing. All right, so with Kunji Kun, we're going to go through some of the opening movements for the sequence. We'll up, down, thrust, sink, hands here, salute. Let's sink, open. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, on four. Cross, open, cross, cutting hand, cover, open, and here. Okay, we shift, one, two, three, kick, trap, move, middle, one, two, three, four, face opposite direction, high, low. Diagonal strike that was cutting hand, come through center, cut, pop. Make sure you get into your stance, adjust this back foot, elbow, thrust, cutting hand, push out, pull back, one, two, step, cat stance. One, two, three, we're here, offset horse, trapping hand, middle, one, two, three, turn, lift, slice, step forward, turn, cutting hand, sliding step, palm, adjust, elbow, poke, one, two, three, back this. Turn. Okay, let me shift over here and see if we, if we need that more. One, step, dragon, one, two, three, divert, four, adjust, turn, Step, shift, cat stance, one, two, one, two, and divert. So just read four of those is three and divert and four. And the fourth one is in that stance, the cat stance. One, two, three. Sit back, this goes here. Step up, double block, pull back, double back this, okay? Pull back, double back this. Cutting hand, thrust, just like in the fourth form. Open, push, one, two, three, one, elbow. So positions like this, cover, positions like this. So there's four of these. And then we turn, we're facing that corner. We step around to a horse stance. So we're here. One, two, three, four, five. 
and six. This is your hooked foot. One, we went over this last time. Two, cover, pick, low. Shift and hook. One, two, three. Adjust, cover, pick, adjust, low. Step, scoop. Step, push. Okay. Foot's like this. You're going to sweep down. Shift like this. So we'll do that again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Left side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. Three, four, try that again. Elbow, roll, one, two, three, four, five. Chun kill, turn, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, Two and close. Okay, so I want to go through that whole sequence. So <clears throat> you've been learning it, and you're trying to string it together. Basically, that's what has to happen. So you go through it one movement at a time. You find the geometry of your position, which is your triangles, your square positions, and you know, keep the movements that should be round, round. Keep the movements that look linear, linear, and Keep your position so that you're working the low, the middle, and the high, and then the directions depending on where they're going. So there's a, a lot of information in, in that sequence because they're pretty long. There's a lot of footwork. There's a lot of uh, transitions, the shifting of the weight, the balance, and so forth. You know, you're, you're in a cat stance. You have to sink in your stances. You have to sink in your stances. So what is sinking? You have to relax the hips. You have to relax the ankles. And you have to let your, your musculature adapt. You know, the, the musculature has to adapt in movement. It's different from, you know, when you're uh, just building strength. Strength can be kind of rigid and stiff, as you know. And... You know, rigid and stiffness is actually a conflict in movement. So you don't want to be too too rigid and you don't want to be uh, strong at the wrong time. That's really what causes the conflict. You're using the muscle at the wrong time. So timing is key. If you're going to try to integrate your body, get your body working so it understands what it's supposed to be doing. Because if you're giving the body the wrong information for by thinking um, wrong, and interpreting some of the movement wrong, then the body only knows what you gave it for information, so that's what it's going to do. So hopefully if you get the right information and you understand what I'm talking about, then you'll get rid of the excessiveness and the tension that you don't really need. You're wasting energy. If you're going through these forms and you're um, huffing and puffing and you're uh, completely exhausted at the end of it, most likely you're using your strength incorrectly. So, you know, for someone that's been doing it a while, you know, you're, when, you're, you're, when your breath and movement are no longer coordinated, then you start to uh, breathe heavily and hyperventilate. Obviously, you're going to use some body energy and you will need some oxygen, so you should, you know, at some time, at some point of the practice of going to form, get a little bit 
winded if you're putting that much effort in it, but it shouldn't you know, be so exhausted that it drains you. So that's something that, that you should uh, be aware of. If you're draining your energy, that you're wasting so much doing things that are you know, just, just excessive. Okay, now, the second part of the form really begins here. Again, for when you're in this position before you, that's the closing, we're actually here and we, we're actually here and we turn, right? So we're here, we turn. You can go right to this position, which is what we're doing here as the first movement in the form. So we to string it together and we did the butterfly palms. Instead of doing this, you turn and you go right into this. Okay, so that's where we're going to pick it up from. That's the second half of the form. We just did the salute. So when we turn, here's the beginning. Okay, so that's the starting movement. Sliding step, short punch, butterfly. Two, three. Okay, step. One, two, butterfly. That's the second one. Corner. One, two, three. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one. Jump, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, good. So that's the complete Gunji Fukukan. Combine the separate sections. Actually, the first up, called the Sengu Halu. The first half practice for strength. Okay, dynamic tension, structure. Second half, more mobility, more um, techniques, directional, moving around in space. So, a uh, great form to do as a um, Fundamental form, but if you practice just that form alone, you would have uh, a lot of the techniques that we do in in the Hong style, the Lam family Hong style, especially. And Hong Ga has lots of lots of techniques. But you know, the big advantage of doing that first section is that you're doing your right movements and your left movements. And if you notice, a lot of uh, other forms really focus so much on the right hand offense. So you don't develop the, the same on the left. Now, what's the advantage or disadvantage of doing more right or left? It's the fact that you're one-sided. One-sided means your brain learns it and it knows that it's programmed into your body. So you're turning like this, but you don't have the ability to turn in the opposite direction because it doesn't know it as well. So, you know, believe it or not, you practice one side only. When you get to the left side, you're still going to feel like you're doing it on the right side because your body wants to wants to do that side first. So 
will dominate. So actually, if you practice something like Gunji Kun, you will actually begin to work both sides and get more coordinated on your on the left side, the opposite side. Now, if you're a teacher, I don't know if most of you, if you're out there, you're doing this style. I don't know if you teach mirror image. If you teach mirror image, it's so important to be able to do the opposite side. Because when you're facing the student and you do the same side as they're doing, they get a little confused. I mean, everyone's a little bit different. Some people can't do memory image. Some people uh, prefer memory image. So you have to be adaptable. So as teachers, it's good to know both sides. And it's not just know both sides for teaching, but the experience of knowing the other side really makes a difference. Okay, so, um, but you know, anyone that's been practicing for long term, even if you've done forms that are not like the Honga forms that have both right and left sides, you will, through attrition, get some of those movements to happen on your left. Okay, so that's uh, one of the things we we bring up. Now, when it comes to weapons, it's a little different. The right sided we generally don't do the left side, and we don't do the uh, the left side for mirror image either because it's confusing and it's hard to do. But we do have double weapons. Now, if you do a double weapon, then your hands are going to be more familiar on the other side. So, so that's just something that uh, you know. If you if you have the if you're ambitious enough, you want to learn all your weapons and stuff on your left hand side. That's fine. Um, but we do have just some just for referencing and, and identifying. It's very specific. Like you do the stick form. In the stick form, just to give you an idea, when we do the stick movements, we just get that one of these little sticks here. Stick forms are right-sided movements. Okay, right side because right side is our strength hand. So if you're using this as your tool, your sh this is the hand that's going to do the driving. Okay, this is the hand that's important. So when you block and you strike, or you block and you strike. So this, actually what I did was, I'm sorry, this is spear movements. This is the left hand. Right hand is this side. So when I'm like this, or I'm like this, my right hand is actually the hand that's going to be sort of the driving force within the movement. So you see how the right side is dominant. It's dominant. So if I'm here and I push, it's my right hand that's really the stronger hand in this instance. If I'm doing the spear, it's still the right hand is dominant, but the left hand is forward. So that's the contrast that I wanted to give you. So that you know, so right-handed movements on the stick, left-handed movements on the spear. So you'll have an idea that one side is still being driven. So if this is the right side and I'm going like this, you can see that my emphasis is the power side is here. If I'm on this side, and this is my still the right side, and my left hand is forward, then my thrust is coming from my right hand side. You see, so that's why when we do movements, why does it have to come from you know, which side is the driving force? So it's, it's kind of unique, but then when we get to the eight diagram pole, we have left and right hand driven movements. So that's really a combination of right and left movements within the same form. Because I, eight, eight diagram form originally was from, uh, from what I hear theoretically, is that it's derived from the Yang style spear form. And then we have the uh, six and a half point form that was a stick form. Combining those movements together has very uh, um, strong characteristics of using right and left intent of movement. So that's really something that you start to begin to understand that when you use your, your technique, which is the hand that's active, which one is passive, how it dominates the movement to create the action that you want it to do. So you know, it's, it's really uh, more of a coordination factor, and because we're dealing with motor skill, your body has to understand uh, how to create these actions and create the alignment of position. 
So alignment and position really comes down to the framework that we've developed from the Gunji Kun, a pillar form. Now, with a pillar form, you have all these elements in it that will teach you when we're here. Okay, when we're here. Like this is a stick, but how do the hands move? How does the hands move? How do we divert? How do we do this? How's the hands come across? You know, how do we move when we move from a position? How do we strike with a stick? How do we move our hands? When we do this with the stick, it's, it's almost like this, right? Similar to those, those actions. Because when you cross your hands, you unwind it. You cross and you unwind. That's essentially what you're doing. So when you take a stick and you cross and you open, you unwind it, you cross and you unwind it. With the spear, it's the same thing. When you cross, when you cross, when you open, when you make your movement, your body form has to be part of that weapon. So the emphasis is what? You should get better body form in your empty hand form. Then the coordination and the movement in the stick will start to blend together once you have the sequence. So that's what's really uh, what we get out of an empty hand form. Now with the with full hawk, it's just more of the the same. We're just building, building, building. They're all building blocks to your forms. You know, whether you're like this or you're like this, you're just building your framework. Okay. Framework is important. When we're here, we have this in the fourth form. We have this in the fourth form, right? Then we have that we're like this one, two, right? Three, four. So you see that movement? I just did the movements that we have in fourth form in Fuha. So you have this, right? You're opening, you curl your wrist. You're like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, you see that? One, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. So what's the difference between this okay, and this? Essentially, basically, it's the same movement. The only difference is that you change from side to side because your torso is moving. So you added a dimension of movement. When movements are multidimensional, that's when your torso your hands, your legs, and the coordination between the upper and the lower body become synchronized so that you have a dimensional movement that you didn't know you uh, had in there because it changes in its uh, continuity and the, and the seamlessness of the change of direction. So when I'm here, that's really here. When I'm like this, The movement looks different. It's the same movement. The body is just doing this, right? But the hand and the leg is moving. Okay. Now, is your movements precise enough to track that movement within the framework of this and still not leave your center? Because if you have an opponent's arm and you're moving like this and you move like this, how do you track? The movement, because the movements are here. The arm is not a zigzag, right? Whatever comes at you, you have to intercept. How do you intercept and change and grab without losing your center? Now, when you, without doing that, so you've, some people practice on different uh, apparatus. You know, the, the wooden monkey or the wooden dummy, when you move, isn't this what you're doing? This chun kill and trapping. So you do it with the arm. It's the same type of thing. So that's what you're dialing in into your technique. So you try to move, use the movements, and your hands are all over the place, and you don't have control of your elbow. You don't have control of your shoulder. The torso doesn't move correctly. All the movements are mistimed. How can you apply a technique? It would be just a dream. But even in a dream, you have to be able to dream that technique in order for you to imagine that that's what's going to happen. So that's why when you learn, you have to take it the step beyond to see what you know, you can, what's presented to you. Because 
a lot of the things that we're talking about is so far uh, beyond just visualization because you first have to get your body to um, be able to do that. So, you know, whether we're like this or we're like this or we're like this or we're like this, these are all positions, 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 here, here, here. All these are moving. When we're here, do I just went over moving like this, right? So what is this? This is the middle, middle block. Unjikun, you step off and we're here. We step off and we're here, right? So what did you do with the stick? You see, the position, without even looking, you can see that there's, the body form is all presented in that form of an alignment. So that's what you actually have to understand. So when we're doing our form, we're creating the alignment of our body. The alignment of our body is the manipulation of our joints and what's driving those uh, our muscles. And then the alignment is our ligaments and tendons. So if you're doing this, regardless of whether you think you're going to go on and utilize it, you know, today um, there's a social distancing. You can't really touch anybody. So you can't even apply your technique. So you have to do it virtually. So the thing is with this, when you're doing your movements, that's what you're doing. You're, you're imagining these movements. So what is the benefit of doing this as something as prevention of age-related degeneration or manipulation of skeletal structure? Your ligaments and tendons are the connective tissue that connects your joint, right? So when you move your joints and you align your body, that's taking your body through, you know, all the parameters that your body needs to go into in order for you to have good circulation, to get your ligaments and tendons working because your body really is an amazing um, machine. And it fixes things that break down or repairs it, depending. So if you're not using your ligaments, you're not using your tendons, you're not using uh, your, your movements and getting your connective tissue to, to do what it's supposed to do, you're not going to bring nutrients. You're not going to bring oxygen to those areas. And they're going to decompose and deteriorate. So one of the things to maintain that is what we do. Movement, sequential memory, mind-body connection, good circulation through the body. How else can you do it? There's, there's no other way. You, can, you can't take a pill. You know, well, you can take a pill to kind of take away symptoms that cause your issues and pain, but the thing is, for the general uh, type of exercise you're doing, you got to work your ligaments, and tendons, but not just putting under stress. Actually, it's not good to put those under stress because eventually those... Uh, get damaged. So you have to move your body the way it's designed, to move naturally through the movement. You don't have to use a lot of strength. You can use strength when you need to, but the coordination, the coordination that you need, the timing that you need, this is what is, you know, really what I try to get across for you to understand. So this is offered, you know, as a, uh, actually, actually as something that you can gain from simply doing what we're doing. So if you like this, um, give us a thumbs up. Time is almost over. Uh, Facebook, subscribe. The more people that do it, the better for us because um, we're trying to get more exposure. But at the same time, for traditional martial arts, I send out a lot of information for everyone you know, in the globe to, to take advantage of is one thing. But the other thing is to get an understanding because traditional martial arts, kind of takes a backseat to what people think uh, are uh, what athletes really need. But actually, it's good for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're just a super athlete or someone that's used to be a couch potato but wants to get up and do this. This is what you should, should do. It, it's a great exercise. It's self-cultivation. You don't need, you know, a team to do this. And, you know, the other thing is if you don't like to practice in front of people, do it at home. At home, you can follow it and you can be, you know, a closet martial artist if you want, but work with the traditional. It's the best thing for you. I'll see you next time.